I'm joined by 8th District Democratic Congressional hopeful, Ani Roseboro Eberhard. First of all, thank you for joining me on Hudson TV. Thank you for having me, really appreciate it. Before we get into uh, your specifics of your campaign, let me give the audience a little bit of background. Um, you're a history teacher in Weehawken High School. You are yes. also a music marketing consultant, started your own label a couple of years ago, and you're a member of the Amistad Commission since 2018. And for those people that don't know what that is, um, created here in the state of New Jersey to ensure that uh, black history education is part of New Jersey public school curriculum. Um, you also uh, grew up uh, part of your growing up uh, overseas uh, in Germany and also in Oklahoma. For lack of a better term, you're an army brat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're a mom, you have two children, a boy and a girl. Yeah. So I guess the first thing I want to ask you is, why do you want to run for Congress? Jeff, I have always wanted to run for Congress. Been a lifelong dream of mine. Uh, the ability to serve uh, the American people and my community is something that I take very seriously. The running for Congress, the opportunity has to present itself. And a lot of congressmen stay in their jobs for a long time. So with uh, Congressman Albio Ceres, who did a great job, uh, you know, him being in office where I believe about 20 years, I would never have thought to run against him because I am Democrat and I support the party 100%. I would never run against an incumbent of my same party. So when I found out that he was not seeking reelection, I just decided to go for it. I decided to go for it. So that's why I'm running. I feel as though, I, well, I know that I have a lot to say. I have a lot to, um, you know, I have a lot to give based on my experiences that I've had. And I, I want to make America better, but it's already a great country. But my experiences could really help America move forward. Hey, let's talk a little bit about your platform. Um, being a, a school teacher, um, that is a major part of your platform. Take a look at your website. In fact, that's the first thing that's talked about. So talk about education, uh, public school education, and, and the vision that you have, the things that you think need to be improved. Well, so first of all, I just think we're lucky to live in New Jersey. Our educational system is top notch. We're always number one, two, three in the country. So I feel very grateful that I'm here in this state. Uh, the public education system is really good. I sent my kids to public schools in Weehawken. You know, Jeff, as a matter of fact, um, well, I'm, I'm divorced, so let me get that out there. Um, my ex-husband was from Switzerland, so we had moved to Switzerland for a while, I think in about 2009, 2010, and we put them in a school there, and in, in, in a school there, and I actually missed being at my local public school in Weehawken, so we came back to America, put my kids back into the uh, school system in Weehawken, they both graduated from Weehawken Public Schools, um, I ended up teaching, you know, I ended up teaching there, of course, being in Switzerland was good because that's when I got the experience uh, in, in their local, well, in the school that they were in to be in a school every day. I volunteered in the art department and meeting really fantastic teachers. They was like, wait a minute, I love this. You know, I like teaching. So when I moved, so when we moved back to America, I went to graduate school at Seton Hall, obtained my teaching certification at Seton Hall and spoke to our superintendent, Kevin McKellen at the time in Weehawken what I wanted to do and they put me in the system and I started teaching at the um, elementary school then high school then I was at the middle school teaching fifth grade for about five years and for the last three years I've been at, back at the high school so I am a I put my money where my mouth is I love public schools in New Jersey and one of the things on the website uh, you believe in free post high school education yes sir absolutely absolutely yeah. The foundation of a great democracy is an educated populace. So children, if you are able to go through high school, definitely ninth grade, you start ninth grade thinking, you know what, if I want to continue to go to college, I can. My Not having money will not be something that enters your mind. And so I know studies have shown that when kids do not have to worry about money, they do better and they move on with their education. So I really want to adopt a little bit of what I see in Europe, Germany, Switzerland, college is free. 
college is free, but they also have uh, internship programs. You could be like an apprentice and things like that, vocational schools. Those things as well uh, need to be put more into play because some kids don't want to go to college. Maybe they want to be a mechanic. Maybe they want to be a plumber. Uh, you know, various other things that don't require a four-year education, but they do need the training. And that kind of training should be provided fully to our youth. All right, certainly nothing wrong with vocational education. Um, one of the other things I know that you're passionate about from looking at the website, you believe in, in recreation centers. So teenagers, and, and I guess uh, prior to being a teenager, they have something to do after class, something to do in the summer as well. Absolutely. So I'm going to go back to my growing up on army bases in Germany. We had these centers called DYAs, so Dependent Youth Activity Centers, where we could go and hang out, play games. We had dances there on Friday and Saturday. Of course, not every you know Friday and Saturday, but we had those options. As a matter of fact, when I was about 14, we took a bus trip to Paris. It was like five, I remember this very well, it was like $5 a ticket because we were in Germany. So doing trips like that were so important to how I, how I see the world today and the opportunities that teenagers should have. It gives them something else to do because let's face it, not every teenager is into sports. So those teenagers that aren't into sports, maybe they're not into plays, they should have somewhere to go as well. They should be able to say, oh, I'm gonna go to the DYA or the Youth Activity Center and hang out because there's programming going on for them. So it keeps them busy, gives them something to do, and it gives them something to look forward to, definitely when it comes to dances. Teenagers and young people love to dance. And trust me, if you ever did some digging on me, my fifth grade class, I celebrated everything. So you would see me doing, you know, the cupid shuffle and all that with my students in class because it's all about celebration and having students enjoy school and enjoy you know what life has to offer outside of school as well district eight um hudson essex and union counties portions of each of those very diverse district um but the majority of which is safe to say it's an urbanized district um all different types of nationalities um, safety is obviously something that's extremely important, uh, policing in this type of an area. Talk about the things that, that you see in the district now and the things that you would like to concentrate on as far as policing and public safety. Well, once again, Steph, you're talking to somebody who loves where she lives. Like, I love my neighborhood. I love the police. Um, I think they do a fantastic job of keeping me safe. As a matter of fact, uh, Last Saturday, I was at an art gallery opening in North, no, in Gutenberg. And as I was leaving, let's say it was about nine o'clock at night, it was dark out. And I had this thought, I am so lucky to live around here because the area is very safe. I did not feel scared. Sometimes when I go into the city, when I go into Manhattan, walking around, you know, I feel a little bit nervous, but I don't feel that here. So I do think the police do a really good job. I, I really do. Um, another thing I want to add, just to give a shout out to my local police, when we had the George Floyd situation, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, a resident of Weehawken named Mary, she organized uh, for a protest in Weehawken. And we were all out there. The police were there. The mayor was there all together showing that we all want justice. We want, you know, we all want equality. We all knew what they did to George Floyd was wrong, but the police in my area, they saw it too. And we really worked together. And I was just so, I was actually very emotional because I'm like, you know, Ani, you really chose a great town to live in, a really great town to live in, so. Let me bring up one of the two other quick points. Um, you want to create a sec, <clears throat> excuse me, a secretary of culture. Talk about that. Yes, I do. So American culture is incredible. If you think about what this young country has been able to accomplish when it comes to music, fashion, literature, architecture, art, et cetera, et cetera, we need somebody at the uh, level of the presidential cabinet to be a face for that, to show the world we are proud of what we created. Jeff, just think about rock and roll. Where did rock and roll start? 
Where did it start, right? Blue. Late, to late 50s. Right, but it started in America. This is our thing. And from rock, well, you have blues, you have jazz, you get rock and roll. And then rock and roll launched all these other genres of music. That is our culture. That is what we should be proud of. Hollywood as well. We launched the film industry in the world. And I think that it would be great to put, listen, we have this culture and we're proud of it. So that's why I really feel strongly about that. Just as a celebration of who we are as a nation, our diversity and how you know, people work together, even though a lot of us, you know, we come from all different kinds of places, so. You're going up against several individuals. Obviously, um, the person that's been endorsed by all of the Democratic chairs in each of the three counties is the son of our United States Senator, Bob Menendez, um, who's a commissioner on the Port Authority. So you're going up against someone who has tremendous name recognition. How have you gone about your campaign knowing that I think you would agree it's going to be an uphill battle for the last several weeks leading up to the June primary. Absolutely. So I am a commissioner on the New Jersey Amistad Commission. I think it is fantastic that we live in a country where people's voices can be heard, where you have the right to run for an office if you meet the basic qualifications. Um, so I celebrate all of my opponents. I think it's I think it's great. This is what America is about. America is not about stifling people. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that because such as no, no. We are a country of freedom. That's why people still come here to this today. People still want to move here because we are a country of freedom, and the freedom to run in an elective office is everyone's right. I want to thank you for, for taking the time to speak with me about your campaign. You want to give your uh, website for people to uh, read up a little bit more about you? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jeff. It is Ani for Congress, A-N-E-F-O-R, Congress.com. Again, thank you for spending the time with us here on Hudson TV. Best of luck in the campaign. It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too, Jeff. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.